morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. So excited. Thank you, Pastor Jason. Yes, another beautiful day the Lord has made. We can come and praise and worship Him together this morning. Um, so we, you know, as most of you know, we like to open up with the Word, and we like to open up with some scriptures. Uh, so this morning's scripture uh, comes from the Word in prayer, right? This morning's scripture comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verses 12 and 13, where the Word says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from sin. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Praise Amen. And so Praise that compassion is what we receive from the Lord when we come to him with fear and reverence. We're so grateful and so thankful. You know, Father's Day, we celebrate our earthly fathers. Yeah. But even more than that, we want to celebrate our heavenly father. Amen. Right. Yeah. So if we can bow our heads and lift our hearts this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for being the good, good Father that you are, yes. for loving us, for teaching us, for disciplining us, as we learned in men, men's ministry, because you love us. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we want to honor you. We want to worship you this morning. We're so grateful for all of the family members that are here, gathered in your name, Father. We want to thank you for uh, the message that will be shared today from Pastor Ray. We also want to lift up Grandma Mary to you this morning, Hallelujah. Father, who is in Hilo Hospital. You, we know that she oh, is in your hands, you Father. We see her week after week singing and praising your name, Father. So we know she is yours, and we trust in your plan for her life, Father. Father, we just look forward to what you have in store for us this morning. Have your way with us, Father. We come before you with open hearts and open minds, uh, just seeking what you have for us. We love you, O oh Lord. We give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise, Thank and we you, pray Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jason. Why don't we give Pastor Jason a round of applause? You're doing a great job. So it's been a while since we did this song, but I think you will remember it anyway. It's a simple song, the kind that we can play. Well, Randy knows more chords, and Kanoi knows lots of chords, but I know three chords. <laughs> <laughs> There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gave. There's no greater love that frees us. So deep. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love than frees us. So deep we live. Sing that again. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love than frees us. So deep we live. We praise your name, stand in awe of your never-ending love. Love so great that it covers all my sin and shame. No greater power, there is no greater force in all the earth than the praise of your love. Changing for all time, and His love endures forever, forever or all time. Yes, His love endures forever. Love divine. Sing from the top, everybody from the top. Okay, you know it now. From the top, here we go. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. Sing that again. 
There's no greater love than Jesus. No greater. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. We praise Your name. We praise Your name. Stand That it covers all my sin and shame. No greater power. There is no greater force in all the earth than the strength of your love. And his love endures forever, unchanging for all time. And his love Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your... Sing mahalo. Everybody say mahalo. Mahalo for your love, Lord Jesus. Mahalo for your love. Say it again. Mahalo for your love, Lord Jesus. Mahalo for your... Here's the last one. Mahalo for your love, Lord Jesus. Mahalo for your love. Mahalo for your love. Mahalo for your love. We love you, Lord. If you have ever received um, a note, a uh, text, email, something like that from Pastor Jason, he is always writing at the conclusion. Love you so much. Every time he's writing, love you so much. And he really means it. Love you so much. And I'm always encouraged because it is a really uh, true reflection of the Lord's heart coming through him. So this is be our time when we can commit to the Lord. Because it's kind of a commitment song. Because we say... Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. Love you so much, Jesus. Love you so carried on your wings. Love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Sing from the top. Sing from the top. Hear these praises, everybody here. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises I love you so
That last part, love you so much. Love you so much. Jesus, Jesus, love you so much. Just one more, do one more. Love you so much. Can you pray for us, please? Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, as a true family of God, we come before your throne thanking you, Father, for this new day that you have chosen us to be a part of. And Father, we plead for your guidance, your leading. You walk in us that all that we do, all that we say, will be as true children of the God who is above all. We love you, Father. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In our Lord Christ Jesus' most righteous name we pray. And all of your children say, Amen. Amen. Mahalo ke Savior, like a shepherd Tree, I tender care in thy pleasant pastures. Be enough, for our thy full prepared. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, now as long. again just like that sing savior savior like a shepherd lead us much we need thy tender thank you lord in thy pleasant pastures feed us for our use thy folds prepare yeah pleasant Allah 
Alakaia, just that last part. Alakaia, Alakaia, Alakaia. Many of you have heard me tell you this story before, but um, this song holds a very special place in my heart because although my, uh, and those of you that have already read the blog on, um, on the website already know this, all, almost 30 years ago my dad passed away, uh, but I can still remember that he was in Queens and he was being, they were going to do an exploratory surgery. He, they thought pretty uh, convincingly that he had lung cancer. And so the doctor said, we're going to operate. And if the surgery is long, what it means is that we have found the cancer, the tumor. We've been able to, or, and we are going to be able to remove most of the cancer in order to address his situation. Then it'll be several hours. And my mom and my two sisters and myself were waiting outside. And then he said, on the other hand, if the surgery is short, that would have meant that we cannot operate and we will have to look for another kind of treatment for him. And so, of course, my sisters and I and my mom, we're all praying for the long surgery because that would mean, you know, that they're moving more aggressively towards a solution. Anyway, about 40 minutes after they started, the doctor came out. We already knew what that meant. My mom, my sisters, all crying. Me too, I probably cried a little bit, but but it was more for me, it was like a, a situation where I, I, it was my responsibility to tell the Lord what I, what I wanted. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. It says you ask or you receive not because you don't ask. It says sometimes you ask and you still don't receive it because you have wrong motive, mm -hmm. something like that. So I knew I did my part. I asked for healing. But more than anything else, I wanted to tell the Lord at that moment that I trust you that no matter what the plan would include, because this, this is not my plan. But if that's your plan, Lord, then I want to tell you that I love you. I trust you. And every time I sing this song or I share this song with other people, that's exactly my, my sentiments when I say, I love you. And I live my life to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, rejoice. Let me be a 
Good morning, church family. Uh, so we want to pray for one of our church members this morning. Uh, they're leaving to go out. I'm, are we calling it a missions trip, Pastor Jack? Yeah. It's a missions trip. So please come up, Pastor Jack and his wife Mahi. If we can give them a round of applause, please. Yeah, Pastor Jack. So you know it's a blessing when you have uh, pastors, I don't want to say retired because like Michael Jordan, you came out of retirement a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but he, he was uh, pastoring at uh, Puna Covenant and then he retired from there and he decided to join our church family. 
which is such Great. a blessing. Oh, and you've been such a blessing, both of you, uh, such an inspiration, and we're so thankful for you. They are headed off to the Solomon Islands. Um, to, well, Pastor Jack maybe can tell you a little bit about that. <laughs> but they're going to share the word of God with the people there. And Pastor Jack, if you don't mind, if I can just ask you if you could share a little sure, bit about yeah. what, what you guys are going to do. Yeah, we're heading to uh, the Solomon Islands, which is right off of uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we'll be there for seven weeks. Uh, I'll be teaching a New Testament uh, survey course. Uh, for uh, Wycliffe Bible translators. Uh, they're in the process of translating uh, 10 different languages, wow. the New Testament into the local languages uh, there in the Solomons. And so uh, uh, friends of ours, we know knew from our years in Beijing uh, who are with Wycliffe and uh, they asked us to come to be part of helping to prepare these Bible translators so that when they start working on their New Testament translation, they have a better biblical knowledge. So. So we, we, we covet your prayers and, and our going. Yeah. There are 10, um, 10 males and five females. So please be praying for these uh, translators. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Praise God. Uh, God. God's work is never done. Amen. Oh, thank you, Auntie. Um, before we pray for you guys, we do want to present you with something because you won't be here for our 4th of July parade march. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got your shirts for you. <laughs> yes, so if we can pray for you guys. Yes, amen. If you can raise your hands and we'll lift them up. You know, in my... um daily reading, I came across a scripture, and as I was reading it, it hit me, and I was thinking, wow, this is perfect for Pastor Jack. It comes from Hebrews 13, which we didn't get to in men's ministry, but the word says, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of sheep, may he equip you with every good thing for doing his will, and may he work in you what is pleasing to him, uh, to his glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we pray for that equipment from the Lord for both of you. Heavenly Father, we lift Pastor Jack and Mahi up to you this morning. And we just thank you so much for their hearts to serve. What an inspiration they are. What a reflection of your face they are to all of us and to everybody who is in their presence. But we thank you that, that their heart is to serve you and to spread the good news of the gospel across the globe, not just in the community, which they have done, but now they go off into the world to share the gospel, uh, to make disciples of all nations. What an, what an example, what an inspiration. We pray that you go ahead of them and make their path straight, Father. We pray a covering over them, protection over them as they travel, Lord. Be with them and keep them safe, keep them healthy, Father. We pray that they can be a blessing uh, wherever they go on this earth, but especially in the Solomon Islands where they go to fulfill a mission, a mission that you sent them on, Father. And we know that you will not send them without equipping them. And so as your word says, we call upon that promise, Father. Father, we pray uh, travel mercies for them, that they uh, arrive there safely and return home safely, Father God. We pray that they can share the word of God with each and every person there and touch the hearts of those that you have predestined to know you, Lord that they can speak to them in their native tongue, Father. What a blessing that is. What, what a uh, mission that is, Father. We're so grateful for that. We just want to thank you so much for their lives. We thank you for allowing them to be a part of our church family. And together as one body, we just lift them up to you, Lord. We thank you so much. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. And we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Uh, okay, okay. We'll come on.
All right, I'm doing something a little bit different, as you can see, right? So, um, as most of you know, uh, Chris has been in charge of our uh, AV, you know, for since COVID, and she will be going on a break this summer. She'll be going to the man. She can tell you more about it uh, when she comes up. But uh, <laughs> we will try to continue to do Zoom. But what we're going to do is instead of uh, breaking up into greeting right after worship, we're going to announcements. Uh, because it's easier for Zoom to just continue recording right through. And then we can fellowship to our heart's content after service. Yeah. And especially today because we have an amazing spread. Thank all of you who are generous enough to bring, uh, bring potluck for celebration today. Um, it's going to be amazing. You know, Pastor Jack, uh, when you came, it's, it's interesting when pastors come and they visit, you know, coming through. But I didn't realize, you know, like, uh, what a celebrity you are, Pastor Jack, because uh, <laughs> um, everybody that I talk to, they just absolutely love the both of you. And so I work with some people who've gone, who still go to Puna Covenant, and they just absolutely rave and love Pastor Jack. And we feel the same way. We're so happy and blessed that you guys chose us to, to make your home church. Um, so we have some announcements for you this morning. We'll get right into it. Um, the first one, of course, is potluck after service, please join us. Uh, we've got a lot of food, a big spread for you for time of fellowship after service. And then um, I'll call up our sister, Chris, and then I can follow up after her. So please, Chris, come on down. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. I feel like they're kind of trying to blame their no more greeting on me, yeah? <laughs> We're just going to try something new for summer, let's say that, and then we'll have lots of greeting at the end. It is a little easier not to have to change all the Zoom settings back and forth, so that's making it a little easier for uh, Jeannie, who's going to be helping out with that. Um, Monday, tomorrow, people will be getting together to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, you can put them in the bowl back there or pass them over to any of us. Wednesday, Bible study, 5 o'clock right here. Thursday, hula, 5 o'clock right here. Friday, celebrate recovery. <laughs> we have a small dinner at 5.30 and then a large group at 6 o'clock. Uh, this Friday is testimony, so we watch a testimony of what Celebrate Recovery has done in someone's life on video. So it's a good time to check it out if you want to come check it out on Friday. Uh, men's ministry will be the third Saturday in July. Yes, happening. July 15th at 9 a.m. right here. Women's ministry is always the last Saturday on Zoom only, so that's going to be this Saturday, yep, at 8 a.m. on Zoom. Uh, thrift shop is always open the first and third Saturday. Is it open in July? Yes, it is open in July, July 1st and July 15th, 9 to 12. Um, you saw that 4th of July shirt, yeah? So 4th of July parade. I won't be here, but the, the shirts look awesome, and uh, like we always say, you can just be like, oh, look, it's my church, and start walking along with them, or jump on the vehicle, or, you know, and then there's the party at Cooper Center at the end, so it's a good time. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, we are on newhopevolcano.com, Facebook, YouTube Live right now. And uh, as well as Zoom, if you want to join Zoom, all I need is your email address because you do have to register. And I send out an email once a week. Jason will be doing it in the month of July. All right. Um, I think that's everything. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Chris. Yes, I'll be sending out the email. So if you have a, a weird email from somebody, uh, Jason loves Stacy. That's me. That's me. I, I, <laughs> um, so about the 4th of July, for those of you who signed up, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, you signed the sheet for, 
wanting to march in the parade with us, we do have the t-shirts, they're in. And if you wanna come and pick up the t-shirts, you can do so today after service, uh, after you fellowship, uh, maybe give the ladies some time to get it prepared. But if you did sign up, come and see us. We'll be in the back by the prayer room. If you don't know where that is, you can come and find one of us and we'll walk you and take you to it. We'll show you where it is. It's right in the back here where we go pray uh, every morning before service. So shirts are in. Awesome. And uh, please join us. We're going to make the announcement every week until 4th of July. We'd love to fellowship with you and walk side by side with you during that parade. That'd be a great time. Um, and I think that is it for announcements. Chris nailed it. <laughs> so we're about to collect the tithes and offerings. If you want to give this morning, we have two ways that you can do it. Of course, we have the website, newhopevolcano.com. You can click on the top of the homepage and um, click give online. And you can enter your information. It's very safe, very convenient. We've been using it for years now. Uh, if you're in the building and you want to give a tithe or, or an offering, we have the offering boy in the back where Uncle Eddie is sitting. He's guarding it very well. Um, you can just drop your tithe or your offering in the bowl um, that way. And, of course, we say all of that to say, if you're visiting us for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you so humbled and so grateful for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for the breath of life, Father. We thank you for this building where your church can come and gather, Father. We're so grateful for that. We thank you for the food that's been provided. We thank you for all the hearts that are here seeking you. We thank you for our, our earthly fathers. And we especially thank you for being the good father to each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for Pastor Ray who has recovered. We know that he um, was a little under the weather last week and it's so amazing to see how you work in his life uh, so that he can come and bring your message to us this morning. And we pray an anointing over his word that is spoken, your word that's spoken through him. And we pray that it dwells richly on each and every one of our hearts. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for this time. We just want to continue to be in your presence. We want to just slow everything down so that we can focus our minds and our hearts on you this morning. Father, we love you so much. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Jason has already said, thanks for everybody for praying. Everybody got, some, not everybody, some people got shook up last week since I ducked out right after the first part of the service, but no voice, and it's taken me the whole week to get back to, to this. So I want to thank all of you who have been praying for me. Uh, I, you can hear I'm, my voice is back. I don't know for how long, but I'm always happy with whatever I get. Um, so I'll say in a big uh, frivolic voice to you, Happy Father's Day, and then you say it back to me. Okay? Happy Father's Day! Oh, right on. I was Because it's Father's Day, of course, my plan is to make a Father's Day message. And so I go through and I make my scripture references, everything, what I plan out, what I'm going to say. And as I look at it, this really is 
it doesn't have to be relegated to being a Father's Day message. It can be a any kind of day message because certainly it's good for fathers who are going to convey these, these principles and use these principles to their offspring, sons and daughters, but it's okay for the sons and daughters to use it to minister to the father. It's okay for the mothers to use it with their their children it's okay for the mothers to use it with their spouses it's okay for anybody to use it with anybody else because if you use these principles we end up being things that are that are seen in uh, galatians and in chapter five which uh pastor jason has led many of you through already if you do these things you become more loving you become more patient you become more kind all of those are good things fruit of the spirit things you become gentle you become faithful you you be, you have more self-control and undergirding this whole principle because everybody wants those things everybody please say yeah we want those things ready go yeah. we want those things everybody wants those things we want it in ourselves we want it in other people the people around us too not necessarily are relegated to only our family we want everybody to be that way. I told you when we were gone for a little while, a month or two months ago, many of you were joining me in praying. I would pray that for Pastor Jack and Mahi too. You know when you really want kind people, patient people, people that have self-control? When you get in the plane. That's why you really want that to happen because you, you're in a confined space. If you get people who are not kind, not patient, not having self-control that's going to be a long long trip okay so we pray for that for every mode of transportation that they have in jesus name we're trusting that that would happen all of these are undergirded by a passage you find in thessalonians in the fifth chapter and the 11th verse i read to you from the new international version <coughs> <coughs> And you have these in your notes. Uh, there should be some out there and some in here too. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Now you can look in any any Bible that you have you are happy with. Uh, King James Version, New American Standard Version, look in any of the versions you want. It says, in essence, the same thing. It says, therefore. It says, pay attention, encourage one, encourage who? Encourage one another and build each other up. These are six principles that we can use in bringing out the best in other people. We can use it with them. They can use it with us. We can use it with each other. These six things. The first one is accept their uniqueness. Please fill it in that way. Because the fact of the matter is God created everybody different. And I have been meditating particularly on this verse because most many of you know our Mopuna Kanaloa was with us a few weeks ago and he was with us for a week and i can't help it but i always think of when i look at him at 12 years old i always look at me when i was 12 years old and i think that he should be doing or not doing the same things as i was or was not doing when I was 12 years old. And I have to remind myself that the scripture says, and I'm going to preach it this morning, that we are required by the Lord to accept everybody's uniqueness because everybody is different. Every one of us is not alike. Even twins in the biological sense are not alike. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I read to you from verse number 6. God works through different people in different ways. I keep repeating that to myself when I'm dealing with my grandson, Kanaloa, that he, Raymond, he's not you. Wait a second, that was Lonnie telling me that. I thought it was me telling me that. Oh, yeah, that was Lonnie telling me that. But, but both of us are telling me the same thing. He is not you. Everybody is unique. Everybody develops in a different way, a way that is unique to them. So if you and I want to, and I believe we do, bring out the best in the people around us, other people, 
one of the great responsibilities, not just of dads, because it's Father's Day, but anybody else is to teach that they, these folks around us, are unique. And we especially have to teach our children that. You can read many, many stories, horrible stories, how young people harm themselves. And when you trace the root back, it is because they don't feel like they are like somebody else. That in, a, in an effort, in a quest for them to become somebody else, somebody that they are not, they have found it to be discouraging and disappointing, so much so that they have resorted to harming themselves. We have to teach. People don't have to be like anybody else. Now, how do you do that? How do you do that in a loving way that you really uh, can convey the spirit of of what the Lord has to say to us. Simple. You don't insist. And again, I have tried this out. Am trying it out with my grandson and my granddaughter. You can train yourselves so that you don't insist on them being like you. I want to say that again. You do that by not insisting that they be just like you. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. Each person should judge his own actions. Each person judge his own. Don't judge somebody else's. Judge your own, this verse says. And, and get out your pencil and underline this. Not compare himself, not compare herself with others. Then he can be proud for what he himself has done. Add to that 1 Corinthians in chapter 13. Love does not demand does not demand its own way. The starting point at bringing, uh, bringing the best things out of somebody else, bringing out their best, is to realize and embrace the thought that we are all different. That's number one. Here's the second one. Entrust them with responsibility. Responsibility. Nothing brings out the best in people. Nothing brings that out, kids and anybody else, faster than having somebody believe in them and trust them with some responsibility. Something that is uh, solely uh, there under their purview. They are in charge of that. Luke chapter 16. I read to you a couple of verses here, uh, verses 10 and 12. Whoever can be trusted with a little can also be trusted with a lot. Now the whole scenario doesn't get moving unless they get entrusted with something. You don't get entrusted with anything, then your boat is not moving at all. The boat only starts to move when somebody entrusts you with something. The Bible says whoever can be trusted with a little bit can be trusted with a lot. And if you cannot be trusted with things that belong to somebody else, like you're the manager, who will give you things of your own? It's a rhetorical question. It's saying nobody is going to give you that kind of responsibility if you cannot handle the first responsibility that was given to you. One of the most important skills in life. And again, it's for fathers, mothers, anybody. One of the most important skills we can do is to teach our children to be responsible. Now, you can see the converse happening in the world in which we live. You don't have to look very far to find many, many people who are irresponsible. In fact, when Kanaloa Maimopuna was here, uh, they were going to see the Spider-Man movie. And my grandson said, Papa, you want to go to the Spider-Man movie? Tutu is taking me to the Spider-Man movie. I said, does it have people? He said, no, animated. I said, no, I don't want to go. I, I don't want to see people. I don't want to see animation. So he said, okay, no problem. They go down. When they get back, I said, so well, how's the movie? You know, they don't talk about the movie for the first 10 minutes. What they talk about is how the people in front of them, young people, all had cell phones, and they were talking, giggling, this. And then I said to Connell, so what did you do? He said, I told 
I told Tutu, let's move. I said, I thought the seats are assigned. He said, I don't care. I said, let's move. So they moved seats. When they moved seats, the group of kids moved next to them. (laughs) And I said, it's so irresponsible. Where are this kid's parents? Somebody bought them this, somebody bought them cellular phones. And they all, you know, calling each other in the movie. Hey, I can see you down in third row. Don't look back at me. You know, like that. You don't have to look around very hard to find many, many people, young people, old people, all kinds of people who are irresponsible. We are filled with a society of irresponsible people, children and adults. Plenty of irresponsible people all around. Many people who get into some very bad situations and blame everybody else. That's not their responsibility. It's everybody else in the world responsibility. We, are, we live in that world now. My theory as a layman is that those folks never learned responsibility when they were children. So they were irresponsible children who became irresponsible adults. And we live in a world with them. So we must gradually turn the responsibility, especially if we're talking to our, with our children, our young people, <coughs> gradually turn over responsibility to them as they grow and expect that they're going to mess up. That is part and parcel of the whole recipe. The whole idea is that they can mess up while you have an opportunity to help and not necessarily correct, more to guide. It's easier that way. You can guide. You can do it together. You know, I got two dogs at my house. They live inside the house, and I have a kennel. You know, dogs can make a lot of mess, if you know what I mean. And I told my grandson when he first arrived, I said, you're going to have to be responsible out here. I'm going to be with you. And I said, which is a very simple formula. I said, here's what we're going to do. First, when we go out there and the newspaper is there and the dog's mess is all there, first, I'm going to do it. You sit there. You watch me. Okay? Once I get finished with that, then the next time, you don't sit there anymore. You come and we're going to do it together. Don't watch me anymore, but you can watch me the first time. Then we're going to do it together. And then on the third time, I'm going to sit over there and then you do, you be here and you do it. But it is not, and I was very surprised. Lonnie was not surprised. I was very surprised. Very, very cooperative because we employed that philosophy. I'll do it. You watch me. Then we'll do it together. Then you do it by yourself and I'm going to be there. I'm going to cheer for you. All right. And it works in almost every uh, scenario that you could think of. The Bible teaches us that Jesus himself subscribed to this very same principle, and he trusted his disciples. I read to you from John chapter 20, verse 21. As the Father has sent me, Jesus is speaking, so I am sending you. Now, if you have even read the Bible casually, you know that anybody in his right mind could see that those 12 disciples were not going to make an impact on the world at all. They're very common people. They're, they're crude people. They don't know how to act in certain, in every, almost every situation. They're rough people. They don't know how to speak eloquently. Who's going to choose these kind of people? And they don't get along with each other. You know, they don't get along with each other. Who's going to, in their right mind, they're going to put a bunch of people like this together? The, the, the guys are as different as night is from day. All ordinary people, unpolished, rough around the edges to say the least. Yet, Jesus chose these men to spend uh, to to spread salvation to the whole world 
You think about that. You and I are saved because of those, the work, the ministry of those ordinary, rough around the edges men. Here's the lesson. Don't create insecure kids by overprotecting them. Please let me say that again. Don't create, don't create insecure kids by overprotecting them. Trust them with responsibility. Now, once you've done that, then number three is you expect the best. I'm going to give you my best. I expect the best from you. If you want to receive the best, not just from children, from anybody else, you bring out the best in people when you expect the best from them. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you love someone, you will always believe in him and always expect the best of him. If you love them, you're going to expect the best from them. Oftentimes, we don't realize how our expectations have a tremendously profound influence on other people. Because people tend to perform at the level that they are expected to perform. Please let me say that again. People tend to perform to the level that they are expected to perform to. There's an old survey or study, it's even, but it's still used today, 1968 Harvard psychologist, Robert Rosenthal. He, so the thing is called the Pygmalion, uh, Pygmalion effect in the, in the classroom. They take first graders to fifth graders. They test them in a standard way, IQ tests. They hold those results. They put the kids in school and they share the results of the test with some of those teachers. The issue though becomes when they, when they share the results, the results are not accurate. So they say, hey, little Jason is in a class. He, his scores were out of this world. You can't believe. Well, in truth, little Jason had ordinary scores lower in some cases than many of the other students, but they didn't say that to the teachers. What they said to the teacher is little Jason scored out of this world and little Kimo, his scores were, I don't know if I've ever seen higher scores. And what they discovered after one year is those very same students all were exceeding in accomplishment in every kind of area because it was not just academics in which they exceeded. They were happier, they were more creative, they were more imaginative, they got along better in their relationships. Every aspect of becoming a human or being a human being, they were flourishing. And they concluded with that test that the only reason that happened is because some of those teachers took what they had heard and said, oh, Somehow they communicated with unspoken word, uh, with not a spoken word. I expect something great from you. I expect something great from you. And the students performed up to what they were expected to be. It's the same thing that we can apply all around. Now, here's the fourth principle. This fourth one says that we are to affirm their value. Please fill it in there. That way, Psalm in 139, chapter 139, talks about this very value of a very, the value of every individual. And it says this, this is verse 13 and 14. You made, speaking to the Lord, you made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. I praise you. Because, and you can underline this, I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. What the Lord has done is wonderful. Say with me, what the Lord has done is wonderful. Ready, go. What the Lord has done is wonderful. Now, how are you going to affirm somebody's value, the value of your children and other people? How are you going to do that in a practical way? Let me give you three ways. The first one is you got to give them attention which is to say you can't phone it in, you can't text it in, you can't email it in, 
You can't do any of those things. You have to give attention. It's one of the easiest ways of doing this to simply look direct, be with whoever it is, look directly into their eyes and communicate with them. In doing so, what you really communicate is you matter to me. That's why I'm here. Here. I'm here in the flesh. They appreciate that because you communicate attention. Second, show them not just attention, show them affection. Romans chapter 12, in honor of Pastor Jason Morton, verse number 10. Love each other with brotherly affection and take delight in honoring each other. Take delight in honoring each other. If you love somebody, that means you got to show it. You can't just talk about it. You can't write about it. You can't, you know, send emojis about it. You have to demonstrate it. People need love. People need hugs. Some people say that the only hug that they might get is going to be in a situation like this, going to be at like a church thing, going to be at some family gathering. That might be the only hug that people will receive. It's very, very important. Sometimes I think I, I should start the, the ministry of Christian hugging. Oh, what's that about? Oh, we just hug everybody. And then what else? That's it. We just hug everybody. Oh, we're looking for members. Uh, the ministry of Christian, Christian hugging. But you have to communicate that and you have to say it. I wrote in a blog, you know, my father, for a long time, I, get, I, I put it off to the generation or I explain it because he's from a certain generation. He didn't communicate love verbally very much early on. But then, because he didn't say it, even though I wrote in my blog that he's good at hugging, I hug him, he hugged me, we hugging each other, no problem. But he's not saying it. And I thought, well, okay, I know he loves me. But the, and, and I'm not all mad and upset. But what I'm gonna do is when I get to be a father, I'm gonna do exactly what my dad does. But I'm going to add this thing too. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I love you, my son. I'm going to love you. I love you, my grandson. I'm going to say it. And that's why I'm saying to you too, showing affection means that sometimes you got to say it. You have to say it. Studies say that children get six times more affection from their mothers than their fathers. Now, we should, fathers, we should be about the business of trying to reverse that trend. If that trend is accurate, you might say, no, not in my house. Hey, good for you. Hallelujah. But it is, if it is, and you want to reverse the trend, I think you want, you would want to, then you got to say it. You got to show it. You got to demonstrate. Even if your kid's 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, it's never too late to start showing your affection they're gonna say hey what's wrong with you you didn't do this when i was 10 20 30. well okay but you're 40 now i love you <laughs> 43 i love you you can do that and here's another one so show attention affection and here's another one show appreciation show appreciation because when you thank somebody when you appreciate somebody it raises their value it raises their value. You can see that occurring. The simple truth is great people make the people around them feel great. That's why they like hanging around you because they love, they love to feel great. Nobody wanna feel all kind of disappointed, discouraged and what, they can do that by themselves. They stick around by you, they feel encouraged, they feel built up. Paul, the apostle was a master of this, Every time, if you look at any of his writings, every time he starts something, a letter, he always says, this is the thing I like about you. This is the thing I remember about you. Remember when we were, the, he, every single letter is exactly the same. And then he goes on to say what he appreciates about these people. All different, but he always starts the same. This is why I love you. This is why I think you're so great. He says it all like that. Now you gotta ask yourself, if you listen to something like this, you can do a self-analysis. How is it that I affirm other people? Think about that. 
Do I affirm other people? And if I do, am I doing a good job at affirming other people? You can quantify it. If I affirm somebody else, you, you affirm somebody, how often do you do that? Do you do it once a month, once a week, once a day? How often do you affirm somebody else? Once in a while, when I can remember, Hebrews chapter 3 and in verse 13, it provides a biblical direction for this very question. Encourage each other. I didn't give it to you. Hebrews chapter 3 and in verse 13. Men's study did Hebrews 3 and verse, yeah, okay. So all the men got this down. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Encourage each other daily. Encourage each other daily. Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 3 is a good verse to go along with that. I didn't give you this one either. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God when? Every time I remember you. So evaluate yourself by affirming your children's value, your friends, your husband, your wife, niece, nephew. Affirm their value. Here's the fifth one. Correct without condemning. Oh, this is a big one. Correct without condemning. The fact is we all from time to time need correction. Please say with me, from time to time I need correction. Ready, go. From time to time I need correction. It's the truth. That's the world in which we live. From time to time we need correction because we're fallible human beings. We're living in the world in which we see. We all fail from time to time. We all gonna stumble from time to time. We all make mistakes. So if you love somebody, you're gonna have to correct them. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse six, the Lord disciplines those he loves. Just like God disciplines us, so then we are to discipline our, in this context, our children. I know that they are so-called, in the time in which we live, it's not very hard to find some so-called experts. And they promote a philosophy that says, just let the kids do their own thing. They don't have to be like you, which we agree. They don't have to be like you. Just let them do their own thing. You don't have to discipline them. You don't have to give them parameters. The universe will give them parameters. You know, just like Star Wars or Star Trek. Just let them be themselves. You don't want to hamper them. You don't want to uh, hold them down, which may sound pretty good, I must admit, especially when it's presented in certain ways. Only thing is, it's exactly opposite of what the Bible says, which is really the litmus test. The Bible says the exact opposite thing. If you don't discipline, it does lots of things, but it does at least two things. It shows, number one, that you don't really love them. That's what it shows. It may not be your intention to show or demonstrate that, but that's what it does, nevertheless. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. If you refuse to discipline your son or your daughter, it proves that you don't love them. I didn't say it. All I did was read it. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. The Lord said that if you, don't, if you refuse to discipline your own son, daughter, it proves that you don't love them. God says that they need, they require, in order for them to live life to its fullest, they need discipline in order to grow properly. And then, number two, it sets them up for failure. Oh, this is a very bitter pill to swallow, but it is the truth. You don't discipline. It sets them up for failure, and it ruins the rest of their lives. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Correct your children while there is still hope. Now, we live in Hawaii, so I always wanted to add over there. Correct your children while there is still hope, parenthesis, they're smaller than you. 
you know, because you wait long enough, pretty soon they're bigger than you. What are you going to do then? You're looking at your 260 pound son. Is your son going to be 260 and you're going to keep him 220? You know, correct. It says, correct your children while, while there is still hope. And it finishes by saying this. Do not let them destroy themselves. Because that's what's going to happen. Don't let them destroy themselves. The Bible says that we must discipline them. And as an extension, we need to even help and correct each other as adults, which sounds pretty reasonable. But it does beg this question. How do I correct without condemning? Because it sounds good, but in practice, how does that work? I can give you two ways this morning. One is never correct in anger. Whether you're the manager or you're the teacher, you're a parent, whatever it is, never correct in anger. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Don't keep on scolding and nagging your children, making them angry. You should underline that and resentful. That scripture says you made them that way, which is exactly what will happen if you correct in anger. So don't do that. Rather, it says, bring them up with the loving discipline. <coughs> the Lord himself approves with suggestions and godly <coughs> advice. So don't correct in anger. That's number one. Second, watch your words. That's number two. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, don't use harmful words, use only helpful words, the kind that build up. Now, it's not asking you to, you know, give an eloquent speech or anything like that. It just say, watch the words that you choose, because the words that you say can build up or can tear down. You don't want to use these words that tear them down. Anybody. Because sometimes it's very difficult for them to recover from that. I mean, they carry it. Sometimes people can carry these words, hurtful words, harmful, heinous words, in their psyche, in their heart, for decades. They're ch the, the stuff they heard as children, they're adults now. 30, 40, 50 years old, they still can remember those harmful, hurtful words. Got to be careful because once they get out there, very difficult to bring them back. So be careful before anything goes out. Watch your words. And then here's the last thing for this morning. Never give up on them. Never give up. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 says, Love knows no limits to its endurance, no end to its trust, no fading of its hope. It can outlast everything and anything. We said earlier, the fact of the matter is, we all fail in life. At one time or another, we all fail. Now, in light of that fact, and I present to you that it is a fact, one of the most important things that you and I can do is to teach people how to forgive. Now, you heard this before probably, but and it's still very, very appropriate. Teach people how to forgive each other, but also how to forgive themselves because sometimes people are good at giving forgiveness to all everybody else but not so good at forgiving themselves for some stuff that might have occurred before forgive others and forgive yourself so if you want to be a good parent a good manager a good anything good spouse when people around you fail, in this context, your children, don't rub it in, rub it out, rub it out. So when that whole episode is concluded, there is 
you know, just like the scripture would say, as the east is, as far as the east is from the west, who is responsible for that? Their father or their mother or their friend or their spouse, whoever you might be in that relationship, because you help rub it out. It's not that they didn't do it, it's they did it and there was forgiveness, they received it, and it was, the failure was rubbed out. And here's another thing, unless I miss my guess, you might have to do it a second time, third, fourth time, fifth. There's no quantifi uh, quantifying it. You will have to do it again if that's what would be required. Now, when you think about it, all of these six principles we just talked about this morning, every single thing from God's word how our, is really how our Heavenly Father treats us. So if you look at how he treats us, you just take that stuff and you apply it to the folks around you. You do it in turn to other people. And the more you build these into your lives, the more they become a regular part of who you are, the stuff that you say, the attitudes you have, the way you behave, the more you impart these things into your lives, the more godly you become. Here's the precept as was given to us in Psalm. This is uh, Psalm 103. I read to you from verse 13. As a father who has compassion on his own children, so the Lord has compassion on those who reverence him. Now, is it always easy? No, no. Is it necessary? Absolutely, absolutely. If it wasn't necessary, then I wouldn't waste your time if you didn't have to do it, if it was not important. Jesus always brought out the best in other people. That's what he wants us to do too. He took them at their low, look, every relationship that Jesus has, he takes them at their lowest level. And then they start to build, 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 build. That's exactly what he wants from us. That wherever it is, our relationship begins with whoever it is that we take it at that level and we begin to use these six things and others, biblical principles, and we start to build, 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 build. And they get lifted up and lifted up and lifted up. We help to bring out the best in them. He wants it for us. We want it for other people. You bring out the best in other people. The only way this is possible is through Christ's resurrection power. It's a, um, it's a supernatural exercise. Nothing natural about it. It's supernatural. Bow your heads and we close this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for speaking uh, to us through your word, uh, how we should be treating other people. We thank you that we can celebrate Father's Day this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can um, celebrate with food. But what we pray for most of all, Lord, is that you would allow us to build these characteristics into our lives. If they already exist, Lord, we thank you for that because they're all from you. We celebrate, Lord, that you have given these gifts so lavishly to us. If there are certain things that need to be worked on, Lord, we pray that you would help us do that in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, that you would... Uh, be with us as we celebrate this day. We ask that you would continue to uh, hear all the prayers that we have lifted this morning uh, over Pastor Jack and Mahi, over uh, Grandma Mary, all of the folks that need your healing touch, all of those, Lord, who need healing in relationships, every area, Lord, and those that are unspoken, Lord. 
We thank you that we can continue to depend upon you. Congregation, before we get ready to close, um, we're going to just make sure everybody has had an opportunity to receive Christ. That's the most important thing. If you came in this morning or if you're tuned in in a virtual audience and you don't have a relationship with Christ, this is the most important part of the service for you. What's necessary to start your spiritual walk and is, is an acknowledgement from you that you need Christ. Very easy to do. I can help you. We can do it through a prayer. We're going to just do it in the next few moments. I would ask you all to just repeat after me. And when doing so, you would be ask, asking God to come into your life. Now, let me just say this. Although I can help with the prayer, all of the other things, the things we spoke about earlier, the things that are unique to you, your voice, your personality, all of those things, your background, your experiences, that's you. That you got to give. Even though I give the vocabulary, you have to give all of the other things when you make your commitment to the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to say the words, you pray with me, and in doing so, you'll be asking the Lord to come into your life. I'll ask everybody to repeat the prayer, even those of you that have Christ already in your life. And in doing so, we'll be accompanying any brother, any sister uh, who might be saying it for the first time. Okay, everybody, please repeat after me in an audible voice. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've done lots of things on my own. I have not always asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver, and I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life, and as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you. So now I say, so I can hear me, so you can hear me, so my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing a stewardship of that gospel message. We pray your richest blessing over any of those that have made new commitments, Lord, whether here in the live audience or on Zoom, Lord. We pray that you would bless them richly, Lord. Allow them to fully understand that their trajectory of their eternity just changed in the last few moments because previously they were headed for an eternity totally separated from you. But now, Lord, with that profession of faith, they are assured a place with you in heaven for all time. Thank you, Lord, for that. We celebrate, Lord. We rejoice, as the Bible says, when even one comes to salvation, all the angels in heaven rejoice. We thank you, Lord, for that. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our time this morning. We ask your blessing over all of those live audience and virtual audience that have joined in. We pray over our food, Lord, that you might bless that and that our and not only would it be ono, but our relationship and talk story would be ono too. We thank you, Lord, for that. We pray in Jesus Christ's holy name. Congregation, please help me close by saying, Amen. 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 So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sing one more song. If you feel like singing, you can uh, sing. We're going to sing No Greater Love, and uh, which was the first song that we sang this morning. Um, if you're ready for your refreshments, I think it's ready to go. When I see Pastor Jason not there, that means the food is ready. So you don't have to wait till we finish singing. You can head out to the refreshment stand. If you're going to head out and uh, you're not staying, in fact, let's say this: if you got to go, take a, take a plate before you go. Because there's plenty of plates to take out, and there's plenty of foil to help you with your takeout. Whatever you decide, God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. There's no greater love than Jesus. 
There's no greater love that He gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. One more. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love than frees us so deep No greater part, there is no greater force in all the earth than the strength of His love. And His love endures forever, a changing always true. And His love endures forever, forever. Love you.